Plenty of people head to see scary movies on the weekends. Well, today we have a real treat, or maybe it's a trick for you. Mark Patton and Kim Myers both starred in A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Now they're both in town for one reason. And why are you guys in town? What is that one reason? Well, we're here for Horror on the Boulevard at the, the drive-ins down there. Well, they're going to show Nightmare on Elm Street in 4D. It's going to be really exciting. In 4D? That's correct. In digital, on a drive-in movie screen. Okay, so this horror on the boulevard, is it true that people get a triple feature? That's what I hear. They do, yes. Actually, on both nights, a triple feature. And uh, <laughs> a lot of fun rock and roll bands. And Butch Patrick's going to be there, Kim and I. And we'll be signing autographs and having fun. It's going to be good. Excellent. So for you two, what was it like working on A Nightmare on Elm Street 2? Is that your first big boy film? It was my first film, period. Period. I hadn't, I hadn't done anything professionally, so I was... Out of my mind, thrilled. I hadn't actually seen the first one, but I'd heard of it and uh, was just thrilled. I met Mark, made a great friend. I, I had the time of my life. It was so much fun. And for me, I had just come off uh, filming with Robert Altman in Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, which was a totally different experience. And I had screen tested for the first one, so I knew what I was getting into. And, you know, we had a blast. We had no idea that 27 years later we'd be sitting here talking to you, but uh, it's just the movie that never dies. It just, it's always fresh. <laughs> Get it, famous last word, never <laughs> dies. Um, was there a lot of, did you feel a lot of pressure in being in the sequel because the first one was such a hit? Did, did you feel pressure to excel? Personally, no, because I hadn't seen the first one. I intentionally, I just wanted to step into the experience without any preconception. So I didn't feel pressure in that way. I just wanted to, again, being my first job, I was just excited to, to do a good job and, and learn. So. And you did. And I did. <laughs> I learned. What, now, what's it like being part of the legacy, the legacy that is Nightmare on Elm Street? Well, it's actually unbelievable. Um, we both didn't recognize really the, the extent of the worldwide franchise of Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, to give you an example, we just came back from London uh, where we had a fantastic time and met all the people in London. Uh, we travel as much as we like. And I've been to Germany, uh, England, Scotland. I'm going, after this, I go to Australia. And wow. the, the lines are just fantastic. The people love to see us. And it doesn't really matter that we're much older. It's just, the, you know, it's their memories. And that's uh, your so it's a blast. Your yeah. passport's filling up. And you're originally from Kansas City. So what do you miss most about living here in the city? Well, I miss uh, what's right outside the door. I think uh, the Nelson is one of, my, one of my favorite things. And my family still lives here. I, uh, my godchild, Ida, goes to the Art Institute, which is where we're heading right after here. And you were nice enough to bring me a prop. Like, is this like one of the originals? I noticed that it was signed. Yes, well that actually is a replica of my original glove. My original glove is in uh, the Smithsonian in Washington. Oh, it's in the Smithsonian? Uh-huh. And the That's second awesome. glove was sold for a quarter of a million dollars. Oh so, my, so yeah. there's that. All right. So we do these, we do one every six weeks, and then the money goes to charity. This is going to the Hard Rock Cafe in Reno, Nevada. Nice. Well, you guys were so sweet to come in.